sometimes Figma can feel a little overwhelming, right? Uh, so I've put together uh, seven tips to make Figma less hard and you a much more awesome UX designer. All right, my name is Dan Scott. I am an award-winning instructor and chief course creator here at bringyourownlaptop.com. And today I'm gonna to show you how to be more super awesome with Figma. All right, tip number one, auto layout mastery. We spend so much time with auto layouts, any time saved compounds over the day. So I've got some icons hanging out down here in a frame. If I select them all, we use our first sweet shortcut, Shift A to make it an auto layout. You already knew that. Let's make it reusable, so a component. Command Option K on a Mac, Control Alt K on a PC. All right, I'm gonna have one on here, one over here. All right, first tip, let's add some padding here. We can use commas. So on the top to be 10, comma 15, hit enter. Look at us, we're basically front-end developers, all Cody and Comary. Once you've got some padding, you can actually drag on the document looking for these kind of like checkerboard lines here and you can change the padding. Ooh. Gets fancier if you hold down the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC, because I want to do both at the same time, the top and the bottom. We can do the same to the sides, so I'm holding that Option on a Mac, Alt on a PC, and it's going to do both sides, but you can see the padding in the middle here is set to a fixed size, so we want this to be auto. The shortcut for that is with it selected over here, you can just double click in the middle and it switches it to auto. Now if I drag it, okay, and you can see it's kind of adjusting on the second one as well. That's why we love you components. All right, last couple for auto layout. Uh, if you've got something that in this case, the width is set to fixed, you want it to be hug, you can go up to the big long drop down, or just double click the edge and you can see that it automatically switches it to hug. It's not what I want. Still a cool tip, undo. All right, the last couple of options is if I need another icon in here, I can just select it, copy and paste it, and you get another one. There you go, so we've got another icon. You can just drag them in as well, and you can reorder them by using your left and right arrow rather than messing around in the layers panel. Look at us, we are auto layout masters. Somehow in my head, that was just one tip. It was like 10 tips. Anyway, let's move on. All right, tip number two, uh, making color styles suck. They do. Um, picking colors is fun. I use uh, Adobe Color quite a lot to kind of like pick my colors and kind of work through. It's all good fun. But turning those into styles inside of Figma, making sure there are good uh, naming conventions and apply appropriately and flexible, that part is pretty sucky. Until go to Shift I, which is the widget tool, and type in color levels gen and look for color levels generator. Open that up. I'm going to drag it over here. What you can do is you can take those fancy colors and this fancy color, copy it and paste it into here. Remember to keep the hash, give it a name. Oh, it's already done it. <laughs> so cool. Uh, primary color. And look at that. They're all named nicely. We've got all of our variants. Even fancier, we can say save styles. And check it out. Oh, I've got a color style with them all listed with all the right naming. Hands up who's done that with the, I don't know, forward slash technique. It takes forever. Let me do a couple more in fast mode. And bam, primary, secondary, and neutral colors. We look fancy, there's lots of flexibility. They're easy to implement. I can just click on the background here and say, I would like the color fill of the style. We're gonna use 500, and we're gonna use our neutral background color. So for the background here, add a style, 500, tidy it all up and go, mm, this one. Look at us. Best of all, our developer's gonna look down their nose less at us when we hand over colors that You know, because you do it, <laughs> I've done it, you've done it. Because naming colors can be a pain, but no more. All right, tip number three, grids rule. Grids for me were a big unlock as a designer, both print and UX design. It's a way of adding consistency. It was kind of like where I went from like a good enough designer, it really kind of raised my game, especially when there's larger projects and things didn't quite fit right, something was wrong. And for me, it was like grids, consistency, big documents, it's awesome. And look, you can kind of just drag it around, make sure that there's even spacing. We're working to an eight point grid, easy to add. And for me, it was definitely a level up. All right, let's make one. All right, to add them is you click the parent frame. I'm gonna go over to here, it says layout grid. I'm gonna hit plus. I'm gonna say, I don't want the grid actually. I would like a column to start with. And in terms of columns, I just want one. Okay, basically I wanna use it just for the margins either side. So I'm gonna do 24 for a bit of space. You can see a bit of gap in between the sides. But the real helper is when we add a second. So I'm gonna hit the plus again, go from grid, I'm clicking the little icon here and I'm gonna say, I don't want another grid, I want rows. 
Okay, and the rows work really well when you've got not stretched because at the moment they're kind of, I've got five rows stretching across the document. I wanna start at the top and I'd like the height of these to be eight. It's a really common size, okay, for spacing when you are using say mobile devices or websites. And the gutter or the space between the rows, I want to be eight as well to give us that kind of like stripy look. Now the count, for some reason it's defaulted to five and you, it's all kind of mushed up at the top here, but I'm gonna switch it to auto and it should fill the whole thing. There we go, giant candy cane. What's really cool about it though, is that we can start having some consistency. You can see here, this doesn't quite line up. Now it does. Where does this one start? That one magically starts in the right place. This one here, can you see the bottom doesn't quite do it? Zoom out, okay, and it should, if you've got your grids visible, snap to it. Look at this, snapping, eight, 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 eight. Oh, so good. Same with the side here, I can drag it out, okay, to get it snapped to the edge. If you're like, oh, how is that so responsive? Uh, come check out the full course. But grids now, I can say, all right, you are, you know, there's a, a three space grid. What size is three eights? <laughs> I know the maths, but you can hold down the option key on a Mac, alt key on a PC, and just kind of like hover between it. So have the thing selected, hold that key down. You can see it says, oh, 24 pixels apart. All right, so now we know that is a good spacing and it could be consistent across lots of the different uh, pages, either in an app or a website. Consistency, I love it. Shift G is a shortcut for turning them on and off because sometimes they're helpful and then sometimes everything is stripy. So you can hit Shift G to turn it off. Even better, you can turn it into a style. So click on the parent frame and over here you can say, see this little style button here? I'm going to add to the style. I'm gonna call this one. All right, now I get to reuse it on lots of different documents all using that same style. Grids rule. Grids do rule. Now these tips are kind of like the, uh, just a couple of the really nice sexy ones for YouTube. Um, I've got like a thousand more of them. Where are they? They're in my Figma either Essentials or Figma Advanced course. Okay, so if you're digging these and you want loads more in a kind of nice structured course format, uh, check out the link in the description. All right, that's it. Tip number four. Tip number four, <laughs> what is it? Frame mastery. Now working with frames is probably what we do the most in Figma. So let's learn some shortcuts to impress your friends and colleagues. With anything selected, you hit Shift 2 and it will zoom in right on that thing. Another sweet shortcut is the N key, N for November. Okay, and just it'll just toggle to the very next container frame. Okay, so you can kind of work your way through your project. Shift N, okay, we'll just go backwards. Okay, so it's a nice way of working through big documents or even if you've just got a stack of them, the N key. The home and the end key do the same sort of thing, but it retains the zoom level. Can you see how it's not just, uh, if you hit the end key, it goes, all right, you're full screen. Everything is full screen, which can be good or a pain, but the end key or the home key, forward and backwards, um, will retain that zoom level. So you can kind of be in at that same level all the way along. But if you're on a laptop, it's hard to even find the home and end key. So maybe the end key is for you. Another handy one is you can actually just double click on the frame in the panel and it will zoom there. Sometimes it's easy to find it this way because shift one, you have everything <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Bad Dan. The last one, let's click on this one, shift two. We know that one already. Let's say you wanna move this to the bottom of the frame or you're doing kind of like a horizontal scroll, but you notice that it jumps the frame. You're like, what are you doing? Don't go, oh, what are you doing over there? Anybody do this? Okay, it can be a pain. So what you can do is start dragging. So start the dragging process, click and hold down the mouse, hold space bar while you're dragging. For some reason, it will keep it inside the frame that it needs to be in and just be over here. So start dragging, hold space bar, and you can kind of have things just tidied, just on the edge here without jumping to the next frame. All right, that's frame mastery. Tip number five is the accessibility hack. For a lot of us, it can be scary to even open up that accessibility door. I know it was for me. What's in there? Is it gonna bide? I'm sure it's gonna be lots of extra work. For this one, it is a plugin rather than the widget that we were using earlier. There's lots of different accessibility tools. I'm gonna to use this one called Contrast. Okay, this one here in particular uses a little drop down. You can generate a contrast report and you can see green is good. There is a high enough contrast between the background and the foreground, or in this case, the font. But you can see, let's have a look, the exact same color used on a smaller font fails. It says it's red. Same with this down here. You can say, all right, this is not working but it's kind of working up here. It helps you develop your skills in terms of accessibility. And in this case, I can say, all I need to do is go you, instead of using that 500, I'm gonna use the 700. And same with the background of this button here. Maybe I've got a darker version of it. Maybe the 500 would work. I know, because I've already tested it. <laughs> 
Sometimes though, it is just a matter of bolding a text that might not be bold, okay, it might be regular, and that might bump up the contrast ratio enough. I'm gonna run that plugin again. The shortcut to do that is Command Option P on a Mac, Control Alt P on a PC, runs it again. You can see, green, we win. No, there's green, we win. There's green, we win. There are lots of different tools. This is only one part of it. I find it's a good way in understanding accessibility if you are very new to it. Now a plugin like this though doesn't replace a full accessibility audit, but if you are one of those people hiding from accessibility because it seems scary, it's a good first step, learn the language, build, or at least start building your accessibility muscle. Tip number six, file mastery. We're gonna learn to flow through Figma like a boss. First boss move is the tabs along the top here. If you hold Command on a Mac, Control on a PC, and go one, two, three, four, okay, you can jump to any of the tabs. It works in the browser as well. The one I probably use more though is hold to Control down, both Mac and PC, and hit Tab. And it just goes to the next one, kind of like cycles through them. Now, depending on your level of OCD, you can rearrange them. So I've got my main styles here that I kind of use the most for this project. I can drag them around, and that one's there. This is the tips video we're making for this. This is the least important, this one's next. So you can drag them around to get your Feng Shui sorted. You can also right click them and hit tab. That one there's always open, you know what it is, so you can tab it down. It works in the browser as well. All right, the last file mastery tool is you can actually split your screen, okay? So this one here, I've got lots of different pages. I can right click the tab at the top and say, give me a split tab. And basically what I've done is I've got two versions of Figma, looking at the exact same file. So this one over here, let's look at the accessibility page. This one over here, we could look at maybe a design spec page. It's the same document, but we get to view one maybe high level, one in details, maybe one as reference, you can copy and paste across them, but it's the same thing. Checks out accessibility, move it around. Okay, it's moving on the screen as well. So sometimes you can be in nice and tight and be working on something in lots of little pixels and vectors while seeing the kind of result in this larger zoomed out version. All right, that's file mastery, like a boss. Actually, before you go, it's weird having two things open. <laughs> it's hard to know how to close it. Okay, so you've got two tabs, they're exactly the same. Close one of them, you'll be left with one. The last tip, tip number seven, please don't make me make variables. Yes, that's the name of the tip. Variables are one of those features in Figma that are extremely powerful and everyone spends like two minutes trying to work them out, find they're too hard and then give up. But they're a game changer, especially when it comes to prototypes. Let me know in the comments if you're one of the people who <laughs> tried it for a little bit and gave up and was like, nah, it's gonna fake it. Let me do a quick demo and see if I can kind of get you back on side. Variables are awesome. So a simple example, let's have nothing selected. Let's go to local variables. Let's create a variable. I'm gonna use a number variable. This one's gonna be called total. And we'll give it just a fake value for the moment, five. We need to apply that to something. I'm gonna apply it to this little text box here. Just a text box with a number in it. But what I can do is I can go over here and say, all right, design view and uh, my text, I can say, let's apply a variable. Which one? We've only got one called total. You can see there, it changed to five. Watch this. I'm gonna change it to seven here in my variable and look, Hack in the matrix, it's changing down there. All right, change it back to zero. And now what we want to do is make this button, make it go up and down. And this is what got me when I was doing it. You got to go to prototype mode. So shift E for the shortcut. And I'm going to say this button here, I'd like to add an interaction of tap or click. And I'm going to say, what do I want to do? I want to set a variable. What variable? Total. What I would like to do to total? I'd like total to add a one to it. Let's click enter. Let's jump out and check it on my phone. Look, you ready? <gasps> One, two, three, four, five, five, I can hit the button. <laughs> I always feel like a bit of a, I don't know, heck in the matrix, computer programmer. It's only a simple variable. So even if you don't consider yourself a coder or good at math, hands up out there, Figma users, it's quite a few of us, like me, but just some simple variables, okay? Just some little basic stuff can really level up your prototypes, uh, especially when you're doing user testing. Sometimes you need some key interactivity that can only be done with a variable. Now there's a million more things you can do with variables, but there's loads of simple things too. Hopefully this tip makes it a tiny bit less scary. And look, I even made mine go down. Down, down, down. <laughs> ah, computer hacker. All right, that's it. Uh, if you do want to carry on uh, leveling up your figure skills though, uh, instead of like zigzagging your way around YouTube with some good videos and lots of bad videos, okay? And you want a bit of course uh, structure, you want a class brief, Okay, quiz questions, teacher support, certification at the end, class projects, certificates, all taught by a handsome ball guy in New Zealand. I know a guy. 
enroll in my Figma Essentials or a Figma Advanced course, links in the description. That is it my friends, goodbye, bye.